Hello and welcome to Winging It. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at all of the new things introduced in Wingspan's Oceania expansion. I know there are a few elements in here uh, that less experienced players in particular are tripping up on. So I wanted to do this video to cover all of those in detail and hopefully clear some things up for your next game of Wingspan Oceania expansion. So there are four things we're going to take a look at in this video. We're going to be taking a look at the Nectar, of course, the new food type introduced in the expansion, the new game boards and how they are different to those we're used to from the base game and European expansions. We're going to be taking a look at the new end game powers that we have with this expansion. And last but by no means least, the flightless birds as well, as I know those could be a little bit confusing if you've not seen them before. So yeah, these are the things we're going to be taking a look here today. Uh, and if you want to skip ahead to any of these in particular, maybe there's one or two that you really want to review in a bit more detail. There'll be chapters in the video description. You can check those out below and skip around, hop around to the bits that you want to watch most. So first up here, we're going to be taking a look at Nectar, which is the new food type introduced in the Wingspan Oceania expansion. I've seen a lot of people asking, you know, what is Nectar? How does it work? Where does it come from? Um, so those are the kind of things we're going to be covering today here and a few of the additional quirks um, and oddities that you have to pay attention to when using Nectar. So as I say, this is a new food type. Um, so first of all, you can think about it like any other type of food that you used to see in Wingspan. It's going to appear in certain bird food costs. It's going to appear in their powers as well. And when you see it in these positions, you can think about it like any other type of food. So if it's in that food cost, you're going to have to spend it uh, in order to play the bird. Uh, you can also do two for one trades. So maybe if you don't have a nectar, if you have any two different kinds of food, um, you can replace those and spend those as if they are a nectar, just as you would with any of the existing types of food that we're very much used to in the base game and European expansion. And as I say, if it appears in the power text of any bird, think about it the same way as you would any of the existing food types. And likewise, some powers or some food costs will have the wild food symbol, which means you can count that as any food you like. If it's in a food cost or if it's in a power type in the same way, uh, you could use nectar or you can collect nectar in the same way as you would with any other type of food. So where does it come from? Well, at first, you are going to start with one nectar in your starting hand situation. So uh, yeah, this is brand new, of course with the Oceania expansion, very much used to in the base game and European expansion, um, having to make that decision where you can only keep five things, be it food or cards. And so obviously for every card that you keep, you have to discard a piece of food, but you get a free nectar no matter what. So even if you keep all five birds in your starting hand, you're going to get a nectar to start you off. Um, and that is going to be uh, very, very helpful, I think, in the starting hands. Another way of getting hold of it, of course, is in the bird feeder. So as with every other food type, you can go and pick it up in the bird feeder. We've got new dice in the Oceania expansion here. Um, so useful to pay attention to, um, useful to check out and make sure that you're aware of how many of these dice faces are going to have nectar on them. Uh, and yeah, how likely you are to see that nectar come up and in what positions you are going to get the choice. So you'll see here there are a couple of faces that have their nectar on it. Um, in those cases, you can choose when picking that dice whether to take a nectar or whether you're going to take the other food type shown there. So worth bearing in mind and worth being aware of knowing how you can get your nectar in at the bird feeder. Another key thing with nectar when you are spending it as part of playing a bird, paying its food cost, you can use nectar in place of any other food type. So this is a huge difference, of course, between nectar and the other food types that we are very much used to. Um, so no longer now with your Atlantic puffins are you going to be looking for those three fish you can spend nectar in place of all of those um, so it's a little bit easier for potentially forgetting some of those birds down so yeah always remember this anytime that you're looking to spend any food as part of paying a bird's food cost to play it you can use nectar now just as important as remembering that is remembering that if it's in a brown power or any other sort of bird activation where you have to discard a specific type of food, you can't use nectar there. If it specifies a certain type of food on the bird power, you have to use that type of food. So for example, if you have a Canada goose where the brown power asks you to discard seeds in order to get two tucks, you must discard a seed. You cannot discard nectar 
as part of this brown power activation. Now there are going to be some brown powers that do have the wild food symbol so as I touched on earlier the same applies here as if it's in a food cost. If it shows a wild symbol uh, you can use nectar either spending or receiving in those brown powers so be aware of that distinction if it specifies the food you can't use nectar if it has a wild food symbol you can use nectar worth bearing that in mind in your future games the next thing to remember with nectar is that if you have any unspent nectar at the end of the round you must discard it so this is the big drawback of nectar you probably if you've been listening through this section so far been thinking wow nectar is amazing it's clearly so much better than every other type of food um, i'm just going to take nectar forever in the rest of my games um, but here is the drawback you cannot keep it between the rounds so um, yeah something useful to bear in mind if you're picking up nectar during that round you have to have something in mind you have to be ready to spend it uh, before the end of round comes along because um, it is going to get discarded there at the end of the round now there is a little subtlety here and this is something that i think all players should really really bear in mind so if there's only one thing you take away from this video it should be um, this end of round reference which details the order in which things take place at the end of the round so as you can see here the first thing that we do if using the european expansion is use those teal powers so if you do have a teal power perhaps some of those birds that let you play additional birds um, or maybe powers that let you discard food to get some tuck cards you can use nectar in these scenarios uh, because those are going to be the first thing that triggers at the end of the round only after that do we come on to discarding nectar so um, as i say it is going to get discarded um, and it happens before the end of round goals so there are some of those end of round goals that will come up that uh, are checking food in personal supply um, nectar is not going to count you're going to lose the nectar before that counts uh, for that end of round goal so again useful to bear that in mind um, useful to pay attention to that um, and yeah, then after that, we then proceed into the other elements of the end of round goal uh, after you've scored it, where you're removing action cubes uh, and you're resetting the tray. Um, and then potentially coming onto those game end powers uh, that we will touch on later in this video. The final new thing to be aware of with Nectar is that it can help you score points at the end of the game. So there is a new scoring category in the final scores that you are going to see in your games of wingspan with the ocean expansion that is related to nectar so um, the way this works is that at the end of the game uh, it is going to check in each habitat who has spent the most nectar and who has spent the second most nectar and give points accordingly you get five points if you spend the most uh, and two points if you spend the second most so in a two-player game it's always worth having a nectar spent even if it's just one in each habitat so that you can qualify for those two points so how do you get nectar in your nectar scoring well the main way is going to be by playing birds. So if you play a bird in a particular habitat, um, the nectar that you spend for that is going to go into your nectar scoring section. So um, worth bearing that in mind. Um, maybe for some of those high food cost birds, if you're spending three nectar on them, that can be a great way of helping you score additional points um, through the nectar scoring. So that is going to be the main way, but it is not the only way because if you are discarding nectar as part of any bird action, uh, when you are taking one of those three actions either in the forest in the grasslands or in the wetlands nectar that is spent or discarded also counts towards your nectar scoring so perhaps you're using a green heron and you're trading nectar for some other food that's going to get spent and go into your scoring pile there perhaps in your grasslands it's late in the game and you're discarding extra food to get some more eggs if you're discarding the nectar there as part of your laying eggs action it is going to count towards your scoring nectar so spending and discarding they functionally count the same in wingspan so anytime you're spending or discarding um, as part of again playing a bird or taking the three actions you can do corresponding to each habitat you're going to put some nectar scoring into that habitat so as i say worth bearing in mind um, can be a good way of picking up some extra points at the end of the game. One final thing to touch on with the nectar scoring is that while discarding and spending count the same and will count towards your nectar scoring at the end of the game, if you're doing anything else with the nectar such as cashing it or giving it to other players, that is not going to count towards your nectar scoring. So as I say, there are some birds uh, that do let you give nectar to other players. Of course, that nectar has left your supply 
uh, but it has gone to someone else, so it is not going to count on your nectar scoring. And likewise, there are some birds that let you choose any food, either from your own supply or from the general supply to cash on a particular bird. So um, in those situations, you can choose nectar just as if it is any other food type. Um, but in these situations, it is being cached on the bird, it is not being spent or discarded. So um, as we talked about, only if you spend or discard is it going to go on your spent nectar. Anything else, it is not going to count as spent nectar. So again, worth remembering that worth bearing that in mind in your future games. The next thing we're going to take a look at here are the new boards that come with the Oceania expansion. So if we jump into a game here, uh, we can take a look in a little bit more detail at these new boards and do a bit of comparison to the base game boards that we are used to by now. So yeah, the first thing that will probably jump out at you is how balanced these boards are in their resource generation. So right through the forest, grasslands, and wetlands you get the same pattern of resource generation certainly for the first few columns so you're always going to get that one resource and an option to trade for a second uh, in that first column and once you move through to the second column you're always going to be getting two of each kind of resource and likewise at the far end once you filled up each of these habitats you'll be getting four of each so yeah definitely one thing i'm sure that players uh, very familiar with the baseboards will be aware of is how much stronger the grasslands is there because you start off already with those two eggs so let's hop over to the baseboards so as i said here taking a look at these baseboards you can see how very much less balanced this looks than the oceania board so right off the bat in this first column we're already getting more eggs than we are food and cards and we're only getting one each of food or cards so um, that is definitely a drawback there for those two habitats and likewise at the far end you're already getting your four eggs and an option to discard for a fifth whereas with food and cards you're only getting three and if you want four you have to discard so yeah definitely um, less balanced the baseboard in general through the three habitats uh, but you also get fewer options for these discarding trades so let's hop back over to the oceania boards so back over here onto the oceania boards and as i was saying you get more options here for discarding and trading for additional resources so in the forest it mostly looks very similar you've got your option to discard cards for additional food very much used to that however we do have these couple of new options in columns two and four where you're allowed to discard a food and reset the bird feeder so um, this is definitely an interesting option to have i think um, definitely cases in the base game and in the european expansion where the bird feeder can very much get stuck with the food that you're not looking for so yeah if you've got that bit of food that actually you don't need and maybe you can reset the bird feeder and particularly if you're looking for some of this nectar you can reset the bird feeder and get yourself um, hold of the food that you are looking for so um, definitely an interesting option uh, and of course as we talked about in the nectar scoring if you choose to discard nectar here it is going to count as your spent nectar so potentially another way of helping yourself get some more points there Moving on into the grasslands, this is where things start to look even more different. So, yeah, in the base game, we're very much used to having this option, at least, of discarding food for extra eggs. But now you can discard cards as well. So I think this is very strong. I think this really does help support um, going for more cards because you can always discard those extra cards for more eggs. Later in the game, and particularly in this column four, you can look at discarding um, potentially two cards, two food, or one of each it is your choice. Um, and that is going to maybe help you get some extra eggs. So yeah, worth bearing in mind, you have more options for discarding here in this grasslands, but you also have more options down in the wetlands as well. So again, from the baseboards, we're very much used to this option um, of being able to discard sometimes those extra eggs um, and getting more cards. But now you can discard nectar as well. And again, as we talked about in the nectar section, if you're discarding nectar here, it counts as spending nectar. It is going to count towards your spent nectar total over here in your wetlands. So useful thing to bear in mind. And similarly, as we had in the forest, we have an option here of discarding food and um, now resetting the bird tray. So again, I think this could be very useful early on in the game in particular, being able to discard a bit of extra food that you might have got hold of, reset the bird tray, yet let yourself look at more cards. And again, I'm going to say it one final time. If you spend nectar here, it is going to count towards your spent nectar total. So yeah, in general, a very different looking board, as I say, a very more balanced looking board to what we're used to in the base game. Lots more options for discarding pretty much every single square here, except for one 
grassland space gives you an option to discard and do something so uh, i think this is very interesting i think this is a, a good option to have let yourself see more resources let yourself refresh maybe the tray or the bird feeder um, and get yourself some additional resources being able to do this trading um, i think is a key part of wingspan so as i say definitely interesting to see um, and definitely useful to be aware of on these new boards with the Oceania expansion. The next thing we're going to take a look at here are the new end game powers that we have in the Oceania expansion. So there are 16 of these in total and they are a brand new power color here. We have the yellow powers, of course, here for these game end powers. So um, I have a whole separate video for this uh, that I did with Teiro from Tuck and Cash. We took a look through all of these birds in detail shared our thoughts on which ones we like and which ones we don't like so if you want to see that i'll put a link in the top right hand corner do go and check that out um, but we're going to talk a little bit about them here in a general sense uh give you a bit of an overview of course of the 16 powers what they do and where they're going to be used in your game so we have a few different types of powers uh, we of course here have some that let you cash some food uh on the bird at the end of the game so we have here the raven uh, and the crested pigeon they both work very similarly but slightly differently uh, in terms of getting you some additional caches we have some that lay eggs so here the black swan is an example of this laying eggs on each of your birds with a wingspan over 100 centimeters so potentially a way of getting some eggs late in the game we have birds that let you play additional birds so very much use of these with the when played powers um, and also those teal powers from the European expansion that let you play additional birds. We now have them on the yellow game end powers as well. So Greyheaded Mannequin here is an example one. We also have the Magpie Lark. And we have the Goldfinch. There's a few examples of here of birds that are going to let you play additional birds. We also have bonus card giving game end powers here. Kakapo uh, being a great example, drawing four bonus cards and keeping one. Potentially very strong way of boosting your point total at the end of the game and yeah as i say 16 in total we go through those all in a bit more detail in the video with tay ray um, but there's a little bit of nuance to talk about here that we're going to run through now so the important thing to bear in mind with these game empowers is when they activate now mark signed obvious they're cool game empowers they activate at the game end but as i say there is a little bit of paying attention to be done here um, we did take a little bit of a look at this back when we talked about nectar and when that is discarded so we're going to take a look again at this end of round reference and we're going to really closely pay attention to where these uh, end of game powers trigger and it is after the final end of round goal is scored in round four so in particular there are going to be some of these birds where you might be playing an additional bird you might be laying eggs you might be cashing food or tucking cards um, these are all things that can potentially help you towards an end of round goal um, but not if you're doing it at the game end phase it is after you have scored that final end of round goal another key thing is that because it is after that final end of round you cannot use nectar for playing these additional birds so if you have something like the gold finch that we looked at where you get to play an additional bird at the game end phase you're not going to be able to use nectar for that that you've picked up throughout the game because it will have already been discarded so um do not make this mistake uh, make sure you've got the right food for playing these birds make sure you're not keeping hold of nectar because that is going to be gone you are not going to see that in the game and phase when you're going to be trying to play these additional birds another key thing to remember is that because we're after that final round teal powers are not going to work if they are played with a yellow power so yeah you can play additional birds with some of these yellow powers if they have a yellow power themselves, you can use them. If they have a when played white power, you can use them. If they have a teal power, you cannot use them. So again, make sure you pay attention to the wording. Make sure you pay attention to the order this happens in um, and try to avoid this mistake because it's an easy one to make and it can be a costly one in your games. The fourth and final thing we're going to take a look at here in this video are the flightless birds included within Wingspan Oceania expansion. Now, I know what you might be thinking. What on earth is a flightless bird? Um, we're going to answer that. We're going to go through in detail um, how they work, what it means to be a flightless bird here, um, and some of the specific instances that you might see these come up and where they might be useful. 
So you'll see here we have these five birds. We have the North Island Brown Kiwi, the Little Penguin, the Kakapo, Southern Cassowary, and Emu. And they all have this star in the place of their wingspan. So these are flightless birds. They have no wingspan. So we have this star instead to denote that. So if you're very familiar with the base game of the European expansion, I'm sure you would know about um, these star nests, the wild nests, where they count as any nest you like, whether that's for an end of round goal or a bonus card or some kind of brown power. This counts as any nest that you like. In a very similar way, these star wingspans count as any wingspan you'd like. So always worth bearing that in mind. Anytime you're checking for a wingspan, uh, maybe it's for a hunting power. Maybe you're looking for a bird less than 100 centimeters. If one of these comes up, it could be any wingspan you want. So if you need it to be less than 100, it can be less than 100. If you need it to be greater than 40, it's greater than 40. Um, it can be whatever you like. Um, it's going to count for those end of round goals as well. This also applies to your bonus cards. So if you have the passerine specialist or the large bird specialist, these are going to count for both of those because they could be any wingspan you like for those. Um, some of those data analyst bonus cards as well. This is another new thing. In the Oceanic expansion, we have these new bonus cards um, that look for ascending or descending consecutive wingspans in a particular habitat. You can pick whatever wingspan you like, whatever is most convenient to you when trying to score um, that bonus card. So yeah, these can be a handy way in particular of being able to score for that. Um, but again, if there's any sort of uh, when played power or maybe... Uh, one of those game end powers that we just took a look at. Sometimes those are looking at certain wingspans. So you might be laying eggs on birds with a certain kind of wingspan. There are some pink powers that work in a very similar way. Again, these can count for those. It's any wingspan size that you would like um, at the time of activation. And it can be different at different times. So again, maybe on one turn you need it to be less than 30. On another turn you need it to be greater than 100. This can count for whatever you want. So always worth bearing that in mind. Um, these can be some interesting ways of maybe getting a few extra points from those bonus cards and from those bird powers that you're using in Wingspan. So there we go. That was a run through of what I think are the important new elements to pay attention to in Wingspan Oceania expansion. As I said at the start, there will be chapters down in the description. So if you want to go back and review any of these points in this video, uh, please do check that out. Please do use these chapters. Um, jump around and find the bit that you are most interested in. And if you're interested in seeing more Wingspan Oceania content, whether that's gameplay, whether that's strategy, whether it's more videos like this where I discuss some of the important parts of the expansion, there are plenty more videos on this channel. Um, there'll be a playlist in the description. You can hit subscribe while you're down there and get notified about all the upcoming videos from this channel. So all I can say now is thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again in another video very, very soon.